guard your mind. I lost my mind once. Now that was due to a malaria drug called mefloquin, but it still happened. And I've had panic attacks before, and that isn't funny. And that's due to liver problem I'm still fighting with. And I've been up all night worrying before. You ever been up, young people? You probably haven't had that yet. But I guarantee you most of these adults here have been up all night long worrying about something, whether it was physical, spiritual, emotional, relational, financial, often has kept people up all night long trying to figure out what they were going to do. Brace yourself. Come into a theater near you. But there are negative attacks on our mind. And I want to give you just seven quick ways, maybe, that will help you. I believe they will because they're in the scriptures. And I'll just give them to you as quick as I can. Wow, away from that mic, you can't hear a word again. Let's go down the list. Number one, in the text, we're in Philippians 4, choose jubilation. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Don't be negative. Stay positive. Choose to praise and thank rather than complain. Everyone loves you when you're smiling and nobody wants to be around a frowner. And the truth is, is that if you'll rejoice, sing and laugh, it'll protect you. I don't know if you ever heard of this lady, Reba McIntyre, but her saying was, to succeed in life you need three things, a wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. I think you need to learn to laugh. Put a smile on your face and rejoice. There are negative attacks, guard your mind, choose jubilation, choose to be happy, Put Put a smile on your face even when you don't feel like it. People get tired of a grump. Number two, choose moderation. Philippians 5, 4 or 5, it says, let your gentleness, King James says moderation. Gentleness is a good word, though. Be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. So don't be extreme or extreme like volatile. Stay moderate. Try to moderate in, uh, your own behavior. Gentleness or moderation, it's often translated. This word is kind of hard to translate. That's the reason they jump around on this word. It refers to a spirit that is reasonable, fair-minded, and charitable. It describes someone willing to yield his or her own rights to show consideration toward other individuals. So let me suggest to you that if you could learn to be moderate in the way that you behave with everybody and not extreme, not volatile, that you'll protect your own mind and everybody's around you. The third thing is choose supplication. Rather than trying to get through life all on your own, learn to pray. It says, verse six and seven, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Don't do it yourself. Take time to pray. I know you feel like I can do it myself. I can do all things myself. And I know it's good to have that startupness within you. That's great. So go ahead and start working on it yourself. But in the middle of working on it yourself, make sure you just stop a moment and pray about it. God will help you. It will protect you. Take time. If you believe in God, you need to believe that God can change something that you can't change. So burnout often happens because we run out of gas because we're operating totally under our own power. One way you can avoid that, just pray about it. Supplicate to God. And that's just, supplication just means to ask in a begging way toward God. The next one is choose uh, meditation. It says in verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever the things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. So don't go negative. Uh, poor, pitiful me only leads you down a hole. If that's the type of person you are, poor, pitiful me, nobody likes me, nobody's kind to me, nobody cares about me, it'll only lead you into a deeper hole. Because the thing is, is that you can't choose to not think about something. If I tell you don't think about a pink elephant for the next five seconds, can't be done. But what I can do is say, Think about a pink elephant for the next five seconds, and you can't help it. 
you will. If you choose to think on something, you can choose to think on something, and that kept you from thinking about a yellow elephant during that whole time. So you can do the positive, but you can't remove the negative. So I suggest to you that you focus on what you meditate on, think on positive things, and you'll be a more positive person, and it protects your mind. The next thing is choose appreciation. He says in verses 9 and 10, the things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, that is Paul, these do, and the God of peace will be with you what all he had done and what they say in the very next verse. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Don't spend all your time complaining. Rather, thank others for what they do for you. Show them some kind of appreciation. You want to be shown appreciation? You want somebody to say attaboy to you? When's the last time you said attaboy to anybody else? So if you would like a few attaboys, nothing encourages like an attaboy when it's sincere. Now, if it's not sincere, don't, don't flatter people, but do say sincere, sincere things and appreciate the people around you. If you appreciate people around you, it makes you feel better about, haven't you seen somebody do something really nice for somebody else and you just watching it made you feel better? So if you're a part of actually doing it, saying thank you, it's amazing how much that protects your own mind. The next thing is choose satisfaction. Verse 11, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Even if you live in Florida, that's a state. So you can be content anywhere. Don't pride yourself on dissatisfaction. Some people are proud and, and haughty about being able to turn up their nose. Ew. Ew, I don't like that. Young people, don't be like that. Don't be proud of your nose up in the air. Don't do that. Nobody needs that in their life. That idea of, oh, I'm proud, I know the glass is half empty kind of attitude doesn't serve anyone and especially doesn't serve you. It's not a badge of courage. It's not a badge of pride. People love to be around those who actually enjoy life who enjoy what they're doing, who enjoy what's happening. Make the most of your circumstance and literally find a way to be satisfied with what you have and quit complaining about what you don't. People just don't want it like that. Well, let me tell you something. God has given you everything. Maybe being satisfied with what he's given you isn't a bad thing after all. And it'll protect your mind. And then number last is choose affirmation. He says in verses 12 and 13, and I know how to be abased. You ever been abased? I think I've been there too. And I know how to abound. I don't know a whole lot about that, but I know a little bit about that. Everywhere in all things I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And this next statement, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not the things right now, it's the attitude behind it I want to pursue. Don't talk yourself out of being able to do things. Talk yourself into being able to do things. I can do. I can overcome. I can learn. Talk yourself into it. When you catch yourself saying, I don't think I can do that, stop yourself right there and say, well, I can try and I think I might could do it. Amen. And then maybe you'll end up saying, not just Mike can do it, I can do it. Because humans can do just about anything they set their mind to. Amen. And if you believe that, you can do things that you would never thought you would have done. Teach a Bible class, preach a sermon, whatever. I was a shy kid, so I might not should have chosen to be a preacher, but I got over it somehow, and here I am. You know, you know what I mean? You can do things you don't think you do. There are negative attacks. Guard your mind. Choose affirmation. And so that's basically the lesson tonight. Uh, as a Christian, we struggle, struggle even to admit sin from time to time, a little less uh, that we might struggle with our being able to control our, the attacks upon our mind. We struggle with that, and we have a hard time admitting that we struggle with that. Young people, we do not sometimes even believe that we can admit or even accept that we might have some mental issues with what's going on. Let me encourage you to guard your mind. This idea that Christians cannot be overcome in their mental condition is just a misunderstanding of a passage. 
No temptation has overtaken you except it is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. That does not mean that stress cannot overcome your mind. That does not mean that pressure applied strong enough to a bone won't break it. Let me suggest that that can happen to your mind. No one is beyond pain. You can't just decide you're not in pain. And you can't decide that things aren't going wrong in your life. But this refers to temptation. So you will not be tempted beyond your ability to resist temptation. That's a promise from God. So when you sin, you chose to, just like I did. And that's the truth. That's all that's teaching. It's not saying your brain can't fail you. So you need to guard it. Amen? So let's prepare for a great life by also guarding our minds. Beware of the strongholds that will wage war against you, such as they can be worldviews. Be careful. Don't just swallow any worldview, materialism or hedonism or Darwinianism or secularism or relativism or communism or atheism or many other such things that you may encounter in the college world. You've got to guard your mind from these. And they can be other kinds of things. It can just be attitudes. You have to guard your mind from attitudes. That worry is an attitude. It isn't a condition. Seeking approval constantly is an attitude. It is not a condition. Having an idol is an attitude. It isn't a condition. Fear is an attitude. It isn't a condition. Guilt is an attitude. Resentment is an attitude. Insecurity is an attitude. A lot of people with low self-esteem end up being proud and arrogant because they think low self-esteem is humility. And humility and low self-esteem are not the same thing. Humility is a choice. Low self-esteem is something somebody's browbeat into you probably. So we need to learn to protect our mind. And you can come up with weird things. Your mind can play tricks on you. There are movies about this. I mean, just your mind can just play all kinds of tricks with you. The movie Matrix, I mean, on and on. I could show you movies that people's thinking was weird in the middle of the movie. So you've got to control it and be careful about what you let into your mind. So that's my point tonight. Protect your mind, amen? amen? We want you to have a great life, and one of the best ways you can do it is to realize that you're just like the rest of us, weak in certain places, and you need to protect everything you've got. You need to protect your possessions, protect your family, protect your life, and protect your mind. We want you to have the greatest life possible. If you're here tonight and you've never given your life to the Lord, we want to give you an opportunity to do that. This lesson hadn't really been about that, but if you've been thinking about it and you want to do that, let us help you if you'll respond by coming forward while we stand and while we sing.